Hi, my name is Sven. I'm from Gieslach Luxembourg and I'm here today on the Luxcon with an Irish author who is going to present himself to you guys right now. Hello, uh, my name is Padre Gillin. I'm an Irish author. Um, I tend to write YA books, usually inappropriate YA books that parents probably shouldn't buy for their children. Um, but I like them. Is that enough? Do you want more? Of course. What would you like to know? <laughs> well, what, what, is, what is the meaning behind that you wouldn't buy the books for the children? Well, I think, I think um, I, I've had a lot of reviews of my, of my work and sometimes I get reviews on the lines of um, I'm giving this book a one-star review because I do not want my grandchildren to read it. I've had a German editor refuse to publish it because he thought it was too disturbing. Um, but it's not that bad. Um, I remember being a teenager. I remember I used to climb trees. I remember hanging from a branch on a tree. And I remember friends of mine on the ground throwing stones at me while I was hanging from the branch. I remember going down hills on my bicycle with no proper brakes, and so on. Kids enjoy risky things. They enjoy being frightened. They enjoy things that are dark and mysterious. Parents, on the other hand, are afraid. They remember also hanging from the tree, and they think back and they think, oh my god, I was so stupid. What was I doing? I hope my child isn't hanging from a tree. I hope my child isn't reading Father O'Gillian's books. So, that's what I meant, really. So how, how would you describe your book for people like those who don't want to buy books for children? Um, my current book is The Call. Um, and I would describe it as, it's a bit like a Harry Potter book where everybody dies. It's based very, very heavily on Irish mythology. And Irish mythology is quite scary, but also funny. Um, and also kind of very mysterious and very dark and very weird. I absolutely love it. A, a lot of people here, they grew up with stories, I'm sure, about, I don't know, Cinderella. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, the yeah, Brothers but, Grimm. Yeah, but I think they're mostly grown up with the Disney fiction with, of with, with the Disney and versions the original of versions of it. Yeah, yeah. There are no Disney versions of the Irish stories, so we, we grow up with a pure thing. And some of them are absolutely terrifying and wonderful and creepy like the Irish goddess of war by who turns into a flock of crows and whenever you meet her it's usually a young warrior who will meet her and she's there washing clothes and if you look very carefully you will see that she's washing blood off the clothing and she's usually encouraging the young man to go and get killed um, so there's some there's some fantastic stuff there and really really interesting and fun well, I would like the folklore to read, read more about it. So, actually, the, the Irish mythology is actually a basic inspiration for your books. Yes, yes. Um, it's, I mean, all writers take inspiration from everything they do. I grew up with Irish mythology. Um, you know, in, in, instead of Sleeping Beauty, um, I might read about uh, stories like Germans and Grania, for example. These were two runaway lovers. And just to give you an idea, just to give you a flavour of, of how these stories are, Jermyn and Grania starts with a banquet. It's a wedding banquet. And Grania, who's this beautiful young girl, she's engaged to marry the very old and ugly king. And she's sitting at the wedding banquet, and she's looking around at all the men who are at the banquet, and she asks her friend, oh, who's the man with the blonde hair? And the friend says, oh, that's Cormac. And then she says, Who's the guy with the, with the golden torque around his neck? Oh, that's, I don't know, John, who cares? And who's the guy with the huge big muscles and the beautiful red cheeks and the eyes that you could just lose yourself in and, and the beautiful rosy lips? Who's he? Oh, that's German. Oh, yes. And who's the guy with the shoes? Oh, that's, you know, that's Oscar. So you, you get a, a, an idea very early on that, you know, they're going to run away together, but also that it's quite humorous. You know, also that it's that it's quite raunchy as well. Um, but yes, very, very different, very different from Sleeping Beauty, I think. Yeah, definitely. But um, how did you come to the point that you wanted to write books like this based on uh, Irish folklore? I didn't really decide to do this. When I, my my book, The Call, is it started with an image. 
I was out walking one day and I imagined a crowded room. And in this crowded room, one person disappears. They're gone. All their clothing just falls to the ground. And everybody around them knows that in three minutes' time, that person will reappear. And when they reappear, they will probably be dead. Now, the important thing is the word probably. Because if they're definitely dead, there's no tension. It's, oh my goodness, there's poor Sven, disappeared, that's very sad, he's dead now. But if there's a chance, even a small, small chance that they'll come back alive, and they know it's three minutes, everybody is there looking at their watches, oh my god, oh my god, what's happened to that person, will they come back, will they come back? So that was the original idea. And I walked around for several months wondering, well, what happened to them? Because even I don't know where they went, or why they're going to die, probably, or, you know where they went. And I got the answers from that from Irish mythology. Because in Irish mythology, one thing that's very, very common is that our version of the fairies are actually quite evil. They're not nice creatures that grant you wishes or whatever. And the favorite thing that they like to do is to kidnap children. That's their favorite thing. They kidnap them and take them away. And if they catch you, and if they take you to their world, you serve them forever and very, very, very few people come back and escape. And so I kind of based it on those legends because I was looking for an answer to the original question of where do people go. Okay, sounds very interesting. Well, from my point of view, I have no questions left. Next. So thank you very much for the interview. It was very interesting. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the club's company. I did. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.